Morning, everyone, and welcome to the JBDC Virtual Business for Tuesday, August 2, 2022. And happy post independent, well, post emancipation day. I hope you had a, an exciting or restful, or however you chose to spend yesterday. I hope it was an enjoyable one for you. This morning, as we join, um, we're going to, I'm going to be introducing a new member of the team this morning. Um, you will begin to see her a little bit more. Not that you're gonna see me less, but you'll see her a little bit more. This is Janelle Grant, and she is our integrated marketing officer. And so she's going to be joining me as a host of the Biz Zone every now and again, you know, because we support each other at JBDC, just as how we support you. So say hi to you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this morning, we are beginning our new series on the entrepreneurial mindset. And we have a really, really exciting presenter this morning. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about him. We're going to be talking about the theme for this morning is think like an entrepreneur, act like an entrepreneur. And our presenter this morning is Wayne Beecher. And let me tell you a bit about him. He is the founder and CEO of Alt Catalyst, a professional service firm and venture studio whose mission is to leverage a strategy, human-centered design innovations and technologies to support the development of high-impact entrepreneurial ventures designed to market creating innovations. So Wayne has a passion for entrepreneurship and innovative finance and has varying levels of engagement with a number of regional and international development institutions to include IDP, UNDP, Development Bank of Jamaica, the Caribbean Development Bank, Complete Caribbean and WIPO, which is the World Intellectual Property Office. And of course, he is a very keen supporter of the JBDC's programs of development and capacity building, capacity building, sorry, and knowledge sharing that we do here with our entrepreneurs. So ladies and, and gentlemen, I don't know why I'm making mistakes, but ladies and gentlemen, please put your virtual hands together and welcome Mr. Wayne Beecher. He's going to be sharing with us this morning, as I said earlier, just a reminder that our session is being recorded and it will be available at a later point on YouTube. So if you have to leave, we understand. And if you also know someone that wanted to join us this morning, but is unable to, you can always direct them to our YouTube channel. All right, so it's over to you, Wayne. Good morning, guys, how are you doing? Let me just put on my camera briefly, but I won't keep it on for long because having some data challenges this morning. But um, today's conversation is is really a conversation. It's not so much a presentation um, because I was actually preparing for a a panel discussion. But Sancho told me that it's more of a presentation. So what I'll do, I'll introduce it to a few concepts um, relating to our mental acuity, something which is often missing from the entrepreneurship agenda. Um, and so I'll share a few principles with you, and then we'll open it up for um, a discussion. So let's start with um, a quote from the Bible, really, um, which will I'll use as a reference to the principles that I will elucidate this morning. Um, and I will start with the first book, Genesis, the beginning. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light, that it was good. And he divided the light from the darkness. And he called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. There's a lot of things wrapped up and, 
and in, and and in, and incorporated within the metaphor and and the analogy around that story. Um, and we're going to unravel some of them today by looking at three areas which I call the way. One is that all things are mentally made first before they're manifested in reality. Then I'm going to share with you some of the mental principles that you need to understand before you get to the process of manifestation. So someone says, oh, this sounds a bit airy-fairy and kind of esoteric and woo woo. You know, why is Wayne talking to me about these things this morning? Because all of these principles are reflective of the entrepreneurial journey and the entrepreneurial mindset that is required to, to make anything real. Um, and so when you look at what an entrepreneur is trying to do, an entrepreneur is actually trying to create something from nothing. He's pursuing an opportunity without regards for the resources that are currently within his control. Or sometimes the resources are just non-existent. So he's calling for something out of nothing. Right? And to do that, you need certain skill set. The first skill set we need to look at is the mental aspect of things and to know that all things are made in the mind. Your current reality as it stands is actually the sum total of your decisions, which are just determined by your, your thought process and your, your mental intention and attention, whether or not you're consciously or unconsciously aware of it. And it's this unconscious or conscious awareness that's actually informed the reality that you now experience. Um, unfortunately, not, not a lot of us have been guided with this knowledge. And so we are unaware as to you know, the outcomes that we are creating because we allow our mental faculty to go uncontrolled and unconchecked and without direction. And so our reality is sometimes seems accidental, but in truth, it's all a part of a, a cosmic play that brings forward what you, have, what you have made in your mind. And so the conversation I want to have today is to get to understand that this mental construct is real and that you can consciously create intentions that you can bring to reality. You can manifest in the material world. I don't know why it excludes from our educational agenda because this is so fundamental. I'm almost getting, I'm middle-aged, getting old, and I'm just becoming aware of, of these constructs. Um, but these are constructs that we should actually have expressed um, at an earlier age because it would definitely change the outcome of our lives. But in terms of our entrepreneur pursuit, what this says to us is that we as creators have the capacity to create anything we want. And so we should not limit the, the potential of our business to the small construct of the reality that we're currently experiencing. What it's saying is that we have the power to shift our reality or to create the reality that we want. So if we want to create a big business because it's aligned with our ethos and our values and our belief and our expectations, and I think that we have been so gifted and we need to manifest something greater in the world, but we're starting small, it means that now we can unleash or we can unshuttle ourselves or we can emancipate ourselves from that mental limitation and consciously choose a different outcome. Why? because we are made in the image and the likeness of our creator, which implies that we ourselves are creators. And indeed, God did gift us with his creative capacity when he says, let us make man in our own image and likeness and let's give them dominion over all things that he had created before. So he expect us to continue in that pursuit of being creators and manifestators of our mental um, construct. If you notice, um, we're begun 
it began when God said, let us create the heavens and the earth. So what he did there was declare an intention and that intention was spoken, but behind that spoken word was a mental construct that informs a creative process. Yes? So how do we do that then? How do we move this mental construct into a domain where we, where we can actually manifest it in the, in the material world? So I'm gonna expose to a few mental principles. They're not, you know, they're not all inclusive, but some which we can, you know, we can elucidate from the, from the quote I, I, I made earlier. So the mental principles imply that all things are mental. All things operate in a vibrational frequency that allows you to draw like vibration and reject unlike vibration. So the creative principles mean that you'll be able to pull things to you. It also implies that there is um, a, what you call a duality in everything. So in all creative experience, when you bring forward a, 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 a creation of a certain nature, it means that there are two sides to, to, every, to every experience that is called forward. This is important and you need to understand it. So when God sends his spirit to look, hover over the water, to do a reconnaissance, to look at what was happening and water them in chaos, he determined that, yeah, let there be light. But it is important to observe what he did next. He said, let us divide the light from the darkness. So we are the, without the light, you really can't recognize that there is darkness. And without darkness, there's no light. So he says, let us separate the darkness, right, from the light. And he called the darkness night. And he calls the light day. And then the day became real because the evening and the morning was the first day. So basically what that principle is saying is that you never experience there's good and bad. And that, you know, when you call forward for an experience, the good might come first, followed by the bad, or the bad might come first, um, <laughs> followed by the good. If the bad come first, it means that you know within certainty based on the principle of duality and that the principle of polarities indicate that Things will move from one state to the next um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a rhythmical way, a cyclical way, just as the seasons follows seasons. So if good comes first, bad is, will follow. And if bad comes first, good would follow. Um, and so you understand that, that rhythmical play, that cyclical play, um, because you know, spring always follow winter. And some always follow spring. And spring is followed by autumn, which is followed by winter. And the cycle continue. This is important. It's an important construct because you have to understand that every experience that you call forward is a growth process. And a growth process requires tremendous energy and effort. Um, so I'm going to let you hold that for now. The next thing is a power of intention. Your attention is what you, you use to call forward um, an experience. And it gives you focus as to what you're going to be doing. And all intentions start with a declaration. Let us make man in our own image. God created the heaven and the earth. So you see there's a, there's a, a declaration of intent that creates focus and cause into in to a vibratory process all the resources all the the capital the team the customers that you need to manifest your business but it requires a certain alignment when jesus says if your eye be single right when he's talking about your eyes being single is that you're aligning your full body your full mind your emotions, your energy, and your actions um, into, a, into a sort of focus 
um, arena. Um, just to illustrate it, this point, there's a story by an uh, Indian, uh, Indian um, mystic called Sadhguru that spoke about a man that went for a walk one day in the forest. Um, and he, the, the walk made him so relaxed, but so tired that he decided to sit on a, a tree to enjoy um, some quiet time and to recover from the walk. It's a long walk, it's a hot day, and he says, boy, I wish I could have something to drink. And suddenly, you know, there was a nice glass of water. I said, oh, well, my thirst is quenched. I wish I could have something to, to eat. So said something to eat and something to a table of the finest fruits, vegetables, um, best meats, you know, and pastries came. And so he did, he did eat. Um, and then he was he's so tired. He lied down and he said, oh, this is so good. Is this for real? I wonder, <clears throat> I wonder if, if, if this is real. Um, perhaps it's, it, probably, perhaps it's a ghost that's res responding to my wishes. And so he wanted ghost. So ghost came and he says, oh no, the ghost, the ghost says, they're going to torture me and kill me. So the ghost tortured him and killed him. <laughs> so the moral of the story is that this man had wandered on a, a mythical version of what they call a wishing tree. And so whatever he says, he said, or wherever he placed his intention, it was manifested immediately. Um, but because he was of an unestablished mind, his wishes and intentions were all over the place. First, this was good. He got he asked for something to eat, got it, asked something to drink, he got it. And then he just could not be contented with that. So he asked for something. He says, it must be, be given by ghost. So ghost came. Then he asked, says it can't be real. So ghost came and said the ghost is going to kill him. So the ghost killed, killed him. His wish became his, his command. And so the point here is that when you're in pursuit of, 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 of creating something as great as a business or an entrepreneur's pursuit, it will require that you become aware of the mental principles and that you apply them with specific intent. And then the third and last principle that I want to look at is the manifestation. Manifestation is a process of moving things from the mental plane to the material plane and to make it real in your life. Just as the, 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 the creative process start with intention, the manifestation process start with attention. So attention bring focus to what you're doing. And so where your attention goes, your energy flows. And your energy is really the creative currency of, your, of the creation process. So you have to, you know, guard your, 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 your currency and invest it wisely. Now, in a, in a distracted world, distracted world like the one we live in, there's a lot of things competing for our attention. I'm sure we, we need to find some time to relax. But if you realize that where, wherever you put your attention, that's where your creative energy flow and that's what you manifest then you might want to think a little bit more differently as to how you go about destroying and, and, and harnessing your energy. Manifestation is actually part the most, one of the most difficult part of the process because it is a transition from the mental plane to the, the spiritual plane. So what that requires is a tremendous expenditure of energy. It's like giving birth to a baby moving from one realm to the physical realm. Um, and it's the same kind of energy required if you're going to be running a race or you're going to be creating something of great value. You really have to put in the time and the effort and the energy. And there are a lot of misconceptions that needs to be cleared up here because um, as indicated in the prior principle, when you call forth an experience, as a creator, you can manifest that experience in real life. But what you might not have control over 
is the flow of that experience. So all things, remember the principle of duality, all things are the same, just varying in degree. So if you call for an experience, the degree might you that you perceive as bad might come first. And that might be received as difficulty, challenges, you know, doubts, frustration. You think you're going to rely on your first customer by in day one. It's day six days, you still have no customer. Your savings are being depleted. Um, your wife or your husband is getting at you to say, what have you done? Why are you wasting so much time on this? You're robbing time from the family. Your children say not spending enough time with them. You know, your business partner start to get, you know, frustrated and anxious with you. Um, the whole world feel like it's coming to an end. But if you hold on to this principle that all experience follows a rhythm, from one degree to the next, from bad to good, from good to bad, then you will know with absolute certainty, because these are laws and laws are absolute. You'll know with absolute certainty that this too shall pass. But only on the condition that you stick with it. <laughs> because if you have bought the experience in the middle of the process, you'll be left with the experience in, 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 in the state that you left it. So you'll always remember the time that when you quit. Because that stick with you forever. And it ruins your self-confidence and self-belief, which is an important part of creating a positive mindset that will tell you never to give up, but continue to complete the experience because it must be completed. So even in the difficult times or the perception of a difficult time, you have to persist through this process. And this is perhaps one of the greatest illusions um, that's been, you know, that we have been conditioned to, 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 to limit us. That difficulties mean something is wrong. When in truth, difficulty is a precursor to, to something good. Because all process of achievement is preceded by an, a significant expenditure of effort. Just think of the principle of terminal velocity, that a plane will always take off against the wind. Um, and then think of the, the principle of, of, of muscle growth, that muscles only grow under stress when exposed to stress. The growth actually takes place when it rests. Um, and that diamonds are perfected by pressure. So I, don't, so, I mean, I had a conversation with my sister a couple of weeks ago. Um, and she thought I was upset, but I wasn't because I was telling her I was a bit tired because I'm actually experiencing some of the, the challenges that, we, that I'm speaking about now. I said, boy, sister, I'm tired. And she said, boy, wait, wait, I don't have this. And I said, no, I'm tired, but I'm good. All things are, all my expectations have been, have been delayed, so to speak. But I know that the continued investment in energy and effort will create or will be followed by a, a, a more positive or more perceived positive um, experience because I'm confident of this experience that all things operate in a cycle and that the good will follow the bad and the bad will follow the good. So I know that sometimes when we want to make it to, 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 to manifest in the real world, we have to exert a lot of energy and a lot of effort, right? But the truth is, when we get to a certain stage, when we know that we have done all that we can and that all that is done within our control, there's a point at which we must create a sense of detachment from the outcome. This is a very important part of creative principles. Because as I said, everything is dual in nature. So if you expend energy, you must recover it. If you create an intention, you must detach from it. You have to, because this is where you complete the creative process and you create a business that is operating on its own. So within the entrepreneurial journey, you know that you have to go through a process of, of creating ideas, testing ideas, you know, work, acquiring your first customers, and going through this period where the business is actually seems like you're going to fail. We'll call it the valley of death. And then you start to acquire customers, you start to grow. You can't stay in the startup phase. What it means is that you have to move your mental um, 
process from being a startup acquiring customers to actually building a company. So you need to put the building, the business systems in place. You need to put the accounting system, financial system, the people management system, the marketing system, and all these systems should be operating, should be designed to operate on their own. And then you get to a certain stage, you should, you should move on. You should rest from that stage. And you yourself should grow from that, from that stage. So you're no longer the, the, the tinker and the, and the build of the product, you know, become the, 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 the CEO and the manager. And then you move from the, on, the manager or the entrepreneur to become the leader. So you create a board of that and the board able to manage. And then at some stage, you should be able to step away from the business and allow it to operate on its own. You can revisit it, but you have to allow the business to operate on its own at some stage. So your objective, if you're starting now, is in three to five years, you sh the business should be almost self-automated. Um, if you're already in the business, you should be thinking, oh, how can I transition out? What am, what's my succession plan? And how do I allow the business to be fully automated and to, to, to operate almost without my intervention? Now I'm packing a lot of stuff in here. Um, so I'm just going to summarize um, the key points that I've discussed. And that is all is mental, all is made in the mind. And if you understand and apply the mental principles, you can manifest anything that you want. So I'm going to stop there um, and allow for any questions and dialogue to flow. Thank you very much. I thank you so much, Mr. Beecher. Um, this has been very insightful so far. I'm going to encourage you guys to send your questions in the chat um, so we can direct them to Mr. Beecher. But in the interim, you have said some very helpful things. Um, I kind of wanted you to just dive in a little bit more for us on, say for instance, there is an entrepreneur that has grown up in a, a sort of framework where they're always doubting themselves. And so even conversations like this are kind of like, yeah, I get it. But what are some systematic steps that you'd encourage an entrepreneur to take to retrain their minds to be like, yeah, I can actually do this? Um, that's, a very, that's a very good question. Um, my data it says I have weak data here. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I think first it start with a sense of belief, right? I mean, if you... If you know that you're made in the image and likeness of your creator, it means that you have the full capacity to be like your creator in every dimension. It means that you, irrespective of where you're coming from, if you, you know, where you start, and, and certainly some of the greatest entrepreneurs that we know are from very difficult and humble beginnings. Um, it's just that they have been exposed to this kind of, of mental construct and they apply it to their life in a diligent way that it allows them to, to gain self-confidence. So the self and, and entrepreneurship is, a, is a really an act of faith. And faith you know, is really a reliance on your own confidence and a confidence of things beyond your control. So what you need to do is to go through the creative process. Start something, call it into being, um, and then complete it. Don't quit. If you quit, it breaks your confidence. It, it defies um, the, the mental principles and, and it will affect you in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a challenging way, so to speak. You, you can always come back from anything, but it breaks your cycle of, of building confidence and self-belief. So what you should do is start something and then take it through to the end. Even if you don't... If you ever decide not to pursue it um, as a life will occur, but to start something and complete it. So what I'd suggest that if you're really at a low hem, just set a very small goal, set that as a target and accomplish it. Complete the creative process. Um, and that will give you some confidence to take on the next step. Yeah, that's very helpful. I think we can all relate to the struggle that it is to start something and then you're seeing like the pitfalls um, and then to pursue it continuously, that's a little bit of a struggle. But um, Mr. Beecher is encouraging us to just complete it, just 
stick to it, go through all the processes and just ensure that it is done. I believe that that is a great way of just building confidence. Begin something and then just carry it through to the end. So yeah, thank you so much for that. I'm gonna encourage you guys, if there are any things that you'd want to just ask Mr. Beecher to just lay it in the chat. Um, and if there are any, yeah, if you want to raise your hand, you can also just use the raise hand feature um, and we will allow you to unmute or you can send the question directly in the chat. All right, a follow-up question to that, Mr. Beecho, is, so we say we, you start something and you just ensure that you carry it through to the end. There is a way, um, I guess, as entrepreneurs, or just people in general, where we see negative things um, and our, re, our response is to immediately back away from it. Um, you raised two very good points or two very good examples of how gold or diamond is processed. Um, and just that it is not a very fun process. It is not um, something easy that these um, minerals go through. But what the result is, is a very beautiful thing. So again, I guess along the same lines of the previous question, how do you retrain your mind to know that when difficulties have come up, that as you said, there's a cycle that positives and negatives, it just, it's just a cyclical thing. How do you train your mind to know that when difficulties come up, it's not an indication that I should run, but that I should push through. It's all, it's all about being aware of the, the mental principles, eh? Um, I know there's no, it won't be a lot of questions today because this is probably a new co concept and topic for most people. This is something we should have been exposed to as children in primary school, eh? Um, I don't know why it's excluded from our curriculum, but, um, this is the sort of principles that, you know, uh, that our, four, our four, forefathers from, you know, ancient times would have embraced and used to elevate themselves to a certain level of consciousness and become rulers of the world. They probably evolved too far and <laughs> forgot some of the basics, <laughs> so they lost it all. Um, but the, the truth is, once you're aware of the mental principles, it will give you confidence in pursuing whatever you want to pursue, to know that you actually can do it. Because I call them principles. Some people call them universal laws. Um, but what, what a principle is, is an observable set of activities that always occur you know, as they are in, in relation to their cause and effect. Um, and so you know, if you put these principles to use for you, you can actually um, achieve the outcome that you want to achieve. So it's just to get started and complete the cycle. It's a similar answer. Set a very small goal if you if you really have no confidence and 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 complete. It could be as simple as doing this: creating a checklist first thing in the morning, a to-do list. Um, and as you complete the task, check the box. The sense of accomplishment to get from that is 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 beyond is beyond belief. All right, and so I, I know that the topic is a bit, and I deliberately, you know, went this route to make it a little bit woo-woo and esoteric, but it's it's the same principle that's encapsulated in, in strategic planning, for example, why you set a goal. When you set a goal, what do you do? You create an intention, right? And then you set your core values. What is that? That's bringing attention to the intention. This is the kind of behavior I want to, 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 and believe that I want to, to, to exit, to, to incorporate in executing my goal. And then after that, you have to set objectives, right? So the objectives become the, the, the principles that you're going to apply in a practical and meaningful way. The objectives is what takes you from the mental goal and the values through to your material to make it real objectives and then projects are what you use to transition from your intention and what you give attention to, to what you make real in a world. It's the same principle. It's just that, you know, it's expressed in different ways. One is more internal and then one is expressed in textbook and forms. So I could have come out and give you a classic strategic planning guideline, but you'd have gotten the templates and the, and the processes but you understand, you would not have understand the principles behind it. So, but, so once you understand the principle behind anything, you see that it is, you can, you can use it to manifest in any dimension 
whether it's business or person, um, personal. Yeah, thank you so much for that. I like how you just kind of brought it back to it having like practical implications or ways that it manifests itself. Manifests itself. So it's not all, again, as you say, esoterical, but it's also ways that the business world has applied these same principles. So thank you so much for that. Um, there's a question, there are two questions in the chat. I'm going to go with Nerissa Roberts says, today's entrepreneurs are faced with outside source, such as financial institutions affecting their progress. What advice would you give someone to overcome this? Well, if, 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 to, to access financing for their business and so on and so forth. Right. Well, the, the origin, and see, this is why you need to understand mental principles and construct, um, which is normally sometimes represented in words or linguistics, right? So the world entrepreneurship really came from the merchandise class in the, way back in France when they wanted to, they needed financial resources to, to undertake their ventures. Um, and when, <laughs> when the money class, and it was worse in those days, would not, would not give them any money, the entrepreneur, you know, pull their resources together to finance each other's project. So that's where the word entrepreneur evolved from. Um, so a lot of entrepreneurs normally think that financial constraint or access to finance is the most significant constraint that they'll face. But the truth is, if you create an intention that's powerful enough and you create a business model that will acquire customers in droves, so here it is again. We're gonna. I'm gonna try to, 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 to match some of these spiritual principles to practical application. As an entrepreneur, when you're creating a business, you're really creating a business in pursuit of satisfying an outstanding demand, a pain point, or a value point that is so compelling to the customers that they will be drawn to you, right? They will want your product or service is a product or service you created to solve their need so their need and your 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 value proposition should be aligned i was talking about the law of vibration yeah everything is energy and everything vibrates and like energy attract like forces and so if you're really good at identifying a market segment to which you can create a value proposition, you'll have customers coming to you. If you have customers coming to you because you can satisfy their demand that nobody else, like nobody else is doing, you'll be, you'll be engaged in what is called a process of customer acquisition. Once you're acquiring customers, you have a number of ways to finance your business, All right? You can actually, and in this modern day of data, you can actually quantify the demand by the expression of interest coming from your customers, or you could create a customer database by giving the customer something free. And we'll talk about the principle of correspondence there, right? You give something, you get something back multiplied, right? So you are principal compensation as well. So if you create a compelling value proposition, you have enough customers coming to you, you'll attract the financial resources you need, either from the customers or you can leverage a customer database to take it to a financial institution who will want to finance you, right? The mistake we make as entrepreneurs sometimes is that we pursue a business based on our dreams and aspiration, not based on the, the demand or the need of the, the customer um, out there, right? You know, so it's it's driven more by a a, a a selfish kind of um motive, right? And not so much by a a a need in the market. Because what we should be doing as modern entrepreneur is creating businesses that are bigger than ourselves, that can chat, that can solve local or global challenges, that can create impact in the world. And we we'll have to do that by finding our sweet spot. And our sweet spot lies somewhere between our skill sets that we're naturally gifted in, what we have a passion for, so that's us, but then it should be in response to an existing need. 
a need that can be quantified in terms of you know, tangible demand. And a demand means the effective desire for a product that can be monetized, right? So if you have all those three elements working together, you'll be able to attract all the resources that you need. Yeah, what's the next question? Hope that helps. I'll take feedback on that if you want. Okay, Marissa, we hope that helped. Let us know in the chat if it was helpful. I think this was a good response to that question. Just consider three things, skill, passion, and need. And that your business is not necessarily only an individualistic thing, but it is serving the persons in the market. All right, cool. So thank you for that. There's another question in the chat, and it's from Brittany. So the question says, for an individual involved in a partnership type of business with persons who may not share the same type of mindset in regards to growing the business to fulfill its maximum potential, what advice would you give to help change the mindset of these partners um, without instilling a feeling of inferiority or, ne or negativity? That's a very difficult one <laughs> um, because... Ideally, the quick response is that you should sever the partnership and try and aff attract persons of like mine. Yes, that is the, the, the right answer, but it's, it's easier said than done, um, especially for a, per a people person like myself. And I suspect the person asking the question is a people person, too, so you don't want to hurt people's feelings. But in truth, if you're going to we spoke about some of the mental principles and one of the principles is a, is a law of vibration. Um, and that in order to manifest anything it requires an alignment of energies. Yeah, I remember I said that line, you say you have to align your mind, your emotion, your energies and your action. The alignment of energies mean that you have to attract like energies that you can bring focus to creating something great. Now, if, if because of your people pleasing nature, you went into a partnership with someone who is not aligned with your intention, not aligned with your passion, and not willing to serve a greater need than the needs of themselves. It means that you won't be able to cre create that focused attention to create the energy, the force you need to get your business to another level. And what will happen is that, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be existing in a very miserable um, partnership or a partnership that will eventually deteriorate but after it saps a lot of your energy and detract you from your focus you remember what i said about attention where your energy flows where energy goes or where your attention goes your energy flows and your, your energy is your creative currency so basically you need you need to be careful as to how and where you invest your energy. And if it's investing in a bad partnership, it means that won't be paying attention to your business. You, you'll be distracting from your intention. Um, and so you, you, you want to avoid that. The best thing is to just sever the partnership now, maintain a friendship, um, and then you, you recreate a new business and try and identify you know, persons who are like you. You call for, you call for, you create an intention, you call for the experience, the experience indicates you that something's not working. You're not going to quit. It just needs to change, adopt, be flexible, and, and try again. As you guys said, pivot. Thank you for that. Very to the point. <laughs> um, yeah, there are many business decisions that entrepreneurs have to make for the betterment of their business itself. And so some of, sometimes these things come into play. Um, there is a question from Leith. I'm going to allow you to answer. We'll unmute you. You can go ahead. You're not unmuted. All right, so I'm having a bit of difficulty unmuting you. I'm going to just encourage you to write the question in the chat in the interim um, until we figure that out. Um, but yes, thank you all for joining us. I'm Jeanne Grant for those who came on a little later. 
and I am an integrated marketing officer at the Jamaica Business Development Corporation. I am assisting Sansia, your regular host. Um, you maybe see my face more often. Um, so yes, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We are also going to be uh, recording this. So if you came on late and didn't catch the first part of the presentation, you will be able to watch it on our YouTube channel. Okay, so I think the question was asked. Oh, wait, there's a question from someone else. Does JBDC have grants to help start up businesses? We are in connection with persons who have those um, links. And so you come to us, learn about our services, and we're able to redirect you to places that have those opportunities. All right, so I see a question or a hand up from Alex Pinnock. I'm going to try and allow you to unmute. And in interim, Leith, I hope you're writing a question and placing it in the chat. Our question is a bit long. Okay. All right, you can go ahead, Alex. Or you placed your question in the chat. Okay, so the question from Alex is how does one go about incorporating a charity under a registered limited liability? That question is for you, Mr. Beecho. Sorry. One question in the chat asks from Mr. Alex Finnock, how does one go about incorporating a charity on the a register? I, I'd, I'd refer that back to JBDC. I think you have to register the limited liability company and then go to the corporate society to, um, to go about a separate registration process. Um, and after verification through different government bodies to include the Ministry of Finance, um, I think they, they will grant you um, your charity status. Okay, thank you. So there are resources available. Alex, we encourage you to email us or call us um, and we'll place that information in the chat for you. So Leif says his or her question is a bit long, so they're unable to unmute. Um, but they're also not able to write the question. I encourage you to just email us the question that you have um, and we'll try and find someone who will be able to answer it for you. A bit sad that you can't unmute, um, but we will do what we have to do so you can get your answer. Does JBDC offer mentors to start up businesses? Our business um, development officers are trained to help you in whatever area, whatever stage you are at the business um, level. And so yeah, we're just encouraging you to call us. Um, you will be assigned or put on to somebody who is equipped to help you in whatever stage you are at. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat um, and I'm not seeing any more hands raised. So Mr. Beecher, thank you so much for coming. Um, I just want you to give us four top takeaways for those of us who, for those who just joined, um, just four top takeaways from the session that you just shared with us um, to just help stimulate their minds um, and remind them of the importance of thinking like an entrepreneur so you can act like an entrepreneur. Mr. Beecher. Four, okay. <laughs> All right, so three. So right, the first thing I don't want you to know is that you are creators and you're made because you're made in the likeness and image of your creator and that you have the creative capacity to manifest anything you want, right? Um, the second one is that this creative process starts in the mind. And therefore you, you have to be aware of the mental principles that will allow you to orchestrate these mental forces to manifest things in real life. And at the manifestation, so the third one is that the manifestation process is really one of the most difficult part of the process because it gives you the ability to call for it and experience that you might want. And the experience um, are all of a, of a similar nature, but comes in different degree. So you might perceive something bad, but you know that under the law of, of, of rhythm that you will move from one state to the next. So it will move from bad to good and good to bad. And so what is required is that you stick it out um, and complete the experience, which should build your confidence and self-belief. 
and give you even greater powers to apply these principles in a more conscious and intentional way. And then the fourth one, I would say, following that, following emancipation day yesterday is that we need to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. And that we as human beings have the capacity to free our minds. And know you understand what Marcus Dab was talking about when he says that, you know, we have to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery and that we have to free our minds because you knew that the mind is a creative force um, behind that invisible substance that exists between us. Um, and that it's important that you, you unleash the full potential of your mind in order to manifest the sort of businesses that can have an impact in the world. Not just on, on your own bottom line, but have an impact on your customer's life, on the society at large, um, and to represent you and your country and your people in a great and magnificent way. One love. One love. <laughs> Oh, I love. Thank you so much, Mr. Beecher. This was a very informative and insightful session. Um, we haven't had one of these in a while where you have just kind of taken us in an internal journey that shows us how our processes affect how we do business. And so we want to say thank you so much. You guys can put your virtual hand clap. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Beechers, in the chat. Uh, we are very grateful for this session. I want to remind us that this session is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel, which is JBDC Jamaica. Um, and so you can take the time to just go through because Mr. Beecher shared quite a few things with us um, and just help yourself Help yourself, do, you, do your business a favor and help yourself with your mind and the way that you're thinking. Um, and so it's recorded. Remember, you can take it on YouTube. You can also look for us on our social media platform. Just type in JBDC on Facebook, Instagram, and also Twitter. We're also on LinkedIn. And so you can keep updated with the sessions that we're having and just, just informational things that we share on a regular basis. Um, and so we are grateful that you're with us. And we want to make this opportunity, these sessions and webinars as helpful to you as possible. And so we will be sending you a review form, a short one, to just tell us how we can improve and make these sessions um, better for you. And we want to serve the ecosystem. We want to serve our micro, small and medium sized enterprises the best way that we can. And so we're just asking for you to just give us some feedback. And so thank you very much. This. Um, now ends our BizZone session for today. And we are very grateful that you guys could have joined us. And so thank you very much and see you guys next week as we continue this entrepreneurial mindset series. Thank you very much. <laughs>